Want to know who the top remaining buyout candidates are for the NBA this season? Then watch this video. What up, everybody? It's your boy Sub up in here, and we got a brand new video talking about the buyout market. Yes, trade deadline is officially over, and now we have the remaining pieces who have yet to be bought out or are bought out and are awaiting their next team okay now this is going to be hopefully an accurate video as the time i'm recording because some people already got bought out and signed right memphis bought out danny green he signed with the cleveland cavaliers or d jackson same thing he's now with the nuggets and i'm sure there's many others so we're going to be talking about in this video at least my top five people because there's still a lot of people out there who are getting bad out like terrence ross you know i think he got with uh, the phoenix suns and and many others so this video primarily is about the top five people cool i wrote have this list right here so we're gonna kind of uh, just get straight to it so number one I think without further ado, it's very evident, and that's Russell Westbrook, okay? Russell Westbrook most likely is going to be getting bought out by the Utah Jazz, and in no way, well, he's definitely, dude, he ain't playing for Utah, let's just be real. He's going to get bought out by this squad, even though he may actually be a pretty valuable, you know, person, an asset to this team, you know, with an all-star and Lori and Clarkson, etc. You're going to get bought out. Where is he going to go? People are saying he's going to probably go to the Clippers. Some people are saying he's going to go to Miami. People like me are hoping he goes to the Chicago Bulls. And I'm publicly saying that. We don't know where he's going to go. But that is your first individual who is most likely number one in most people's lists in terms of the, you know, the person who's going to get bought out that has to sign with the team. He's number the top of the top uh, of the buyout players right now. So Russell Westbrook at number one. Number two, I have John Wall in this list, right? John Wall was playing, obviously, for the Houston in the past, and I know he got beef, and yeah, he ends up going to Houston, and obviously, he was going to get bought out from Houston as well. He ain't trying to play for that team. He literally made clips talking about his time in Houston, which is not it. He's going to obviously sign with another contending team, hopefully, and, you know, there's various teams that he can sign with. Uh, not many that come to mind, obviously, the Lakers, do they need another guard? I don't know. I'm sure a team will pick him up, though, because he, you know, was playing with the Clippers this season. And if you watch some of the games or at least the highlights, you, you notice that he had some pretty good, he had a good step, right? He played with confidence, had some good games and, you know, pretty, pretty shocking that he got, you know, you know, uh, bought out or whatever. Uh, just not with the Clippers anymore. But that's that's just how the NBA works. So I do definitely foresee a team picking him up. Maybe it's Miami. If they can get Westbrook, we'll have to see. But Russell Westbrook is number two. Number three, we have Patrick Beverly. Now, Patrick Beverly, obviously, if you've been watching the league, is definitely noted for his energy, his effort, and his defensive prowess. Uh, he may not be the most offensively talented player, although if you watch the game against Boston, uh, in which they lost with a crazy controversial call, that putback dunk was something we ain't ever expected in our life along with those super clutch threes, which he's made in the past. But nonetheless, brother can shoot the ball when he's not, you know, the main three-point shooter as we saw with the Lakers, right? And obviously he is that veteran presence and he is somebody who can uplift people. Obviously, I'd like Russell Westbrook on the Bulls, but I did mention, you know, even Patrick Beverly would be that, that voice or identity that the team needs along with many, many, many other teams. So I would not be surprised if a team like Minnesota, for example, who just had him, ends up signing him. Maybe the Clippers. I don't know. I know him and Chris Paul don't have, you know, see eye to eye. But man, can you imagine Patrick Bev on that team? They end up, you know, shaking it out. And now you got Beverly, Duran in the squad with CP3, etc. You know what? He's somebody to watch out for. I can totally see him being signed by a nice contender. And he's going to add a lot of spark to that team. You imagine him with the with the uh, the Bucks? Oh my goodness, bro. That would be crazy. So that's Patrick Beverly. So we got two more. We got Kevin Love. Now he's not officially bought out by the Cleveland Cavaliers. But my man is definitely, and I mean definitely, a talented player. He may not be that same 2020 player, 2015 player like he, he once was. But if you've been watching some Cleveland Cavaliers games, which I definitely did this season, you will definitely notice that this brother, you know, obviously took a, a lesser role coming off the bench. But when he was starting those few games and obviously him even coming off the bench was playing at a very high and efficient level. And he was shooting that rock 
very efficiently. I remember personally in some games he played against the Bulls, etc. Brother looked like he couldn't miss, man. He looked like Ray Allen from that three-point line. So a team that needs that stretch four or five who can shoot that ball, make the right pass, come off the bench, play 20, 25 minutes a game. I think there is definitely a need for that. And I think a lot of teams will take, you know, take that on. Maybe the Lakers. I, I love it. Uh, you know, LeBron getting his boy Love back, who he won a championship with. But I can see a lot of other teams, man, trying to go for him too. Whether it's Boston, whether it's, you know, I don't, I, I don't even know, bro. Like, there's just so many teams that could benefit from Kevin Love. So he is definitely one to watch out for. So now I got number five, and then I'll give a quick honorable mention. So number five is actually somebody who not necessarily is bought out, but it's somebody who's just not in the league that I definitely think can help an NBA squad that is destined to be in the playoffs with that veteran chip. And I'm going to have to put this guy in, bro. And that's Carmelo Anthony, man. Carmelo Anthony last year played for the Los Angeles Lakers, and he actually had put up some decent numbers. I'm not saying it was like 20 points a game or so, but, you know, I saw the 10 or more. He had some clutch threes. He actually was one of the best three-point shooters on that squad, which was not even considered a squad. Uh, and obviously, he has that that veteran presence, man. 38, 39 years old. We're not saying Melo has to play 30 minutes a game. But we do know right now, without having done anything, you just take Melo as is, whether he's in shape or not in shape, you put him in a game. He will get you some big threes. He will get you 10 to 20 points. Occasionally, maybe a plus 20 point game performance. And he'll just be there to help your squad, bro. He was forced to be that three point spot up shooter with the Lakers squad. He made a bunch of them. Had a couple really clutch shots if you watched the Lakers last season. And most definitely is a player who I think can help an NBA team, especially off the bench right now. I think Chris Paul was an advocate for Melo coming to the Phoenix Suns. That'd be crazy their buddies and Melo can still produce in the NBA and if you don't believe that you you a casual bro because Melo right now is 100% better than at least one person who's the 14th or 15th roster spot on an NBA roster 12th roster spot whatever the number is Melo is better than at least one of them and I'm telling you that's the truth now that is pretty much the five people that I have I have to give an honorable mention because I got to be a little bit biased and that's my MVP Derek Rose he is still talented he's still producing numbers when he was given an opportunity he still had some great highlights and some great dimes great passes etc but the way that the Knicks roster is constructed with Brunson quickly etc he is just not getting more time uh, you know coach Tibbs respect did well here in Chicago for us great coach but unfortunately he is set on his ways he didn't want to play Cam Reddish he's now obviously in Portland he don't want to play Derrick Rose now so now Rose is wasting you know th year 33 and he's 33 years old with this Knicks team who obviously embraced him but just are not playing him anymore and it's time that this brother gets bought out and goes to a team and helps them contend like I said I don't know which team it is I'll always be rooting for the Bulls but regardless I think Milwaukee showed interest he is an honorable mention. So in the comments down below, everybody, let me know in the comments down below who your top buyout market players are. Where do you think they're going to go? Am I missing people? I know there's Abaka, there's Will Barden and others, but I had to give you my top five. You let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Like it, bell, all that cheese, and I'll see you soon, man. Peace!